Hello everybody, Brad the Guitologist here. In this video I thought I would talk about something I get asked about quite a bit. And that is what are the things that you need uh, to get started doing amplifier repair? Um, well, if you want to repair a tube amplifier like an old guitar amplifier or an old hi-fi amplifier, uh, the technologies between the two are pretty much the same. And in 90, probably 95% of cases, you can use just a few things uh, to really get you by. Uh, the first thing I would recommend if you're going to do this kind of work is you are going to absolutely need the RCA receiving tube manual. You can find them on uh, Amazon. I will put a link in the description. And I will actually put links of all the stuff in the description. But the RCA tube manual is absolutely essential because uh, there are going to be a lot of cases where you are going to come across tubes you don't really recognize. You're going to need to know the pinouts for those tubes so that you can troubleshoot, so you can trace circuits, so you can see, for instance, what the maximum plate voltages are supposed to be, the operating curves are supposed to be. You're going to need to see a lot of things that are only available, really, if you look at data sheets for old tubes. So you need to pick up this manual. Also, in the first couple chapters, you're also going to find a lot of useful information, just general information about how to apply Ohm's law, common circuits that are used in audio output sections, uh, common preamps. You're going to see a lot of things in there that are going to be extremely useful if you're still learning learning uh, about uh, tube amp circuits. So pick up an RCA receiving tube manual. Uh, the second thing you're going to need is a some type of variable transformer or variac. You could come across this yard sale and there's a really cool amplifier there. You, the owner said it hasn't been plugged in in decades and you get it home. You don't just want to plug the thing in. Really what you want to do is you want to plug it into a variable transformer so that you can dial up the voltage on the input slowly and you can uh, do some tests to make sure that nothing is going to burn up on you because a lot of the value in vintage amplifiers is um, you know having original uh, transformers, original output transformer, original power transformer and if you burn those up on accident because you were just flippant and you just hit the switch on the damn thing and then it you know it sparks fly then you've kind of ruined your investment in a way. So you are absolutely, uh, essentially, going to need a, a variable transformer if you're going to do this kind of work because you really don't want to fire anything up that is in an unknown state uh, without uh, having this basic piece of equipment. And that brings me to another note. This is uh, basically essentials that you're going to need. This is not an exhaustive, exhaustive list of the things that you might need for all situations. Like, But like I said, this, these few things should cover you in 95% of all cases that you're going to come across. The next thing you're going to absolutely need is a digital multimeter. Uh, multimeters measure all sorts of things. They measure uh, voltage, and uh, voltage is divided into two kinds of voltage, AC and DC voltage. You are going to need a, a multimeter that measures both of these. You're also going to need something, uh, preferably, that will measure uh, diodes and check the uh, goodness or badness of a diode. You're going to need to measure resistance uh, in ohms. You're also going to need to, uh, a lot of times, assess the uh, value of capacitors before you're installing them in circuits. And these usually only test at low voltages, so they're not you know, the be-all, end-all of capacitor testers, but they will give you a pretty good guideline as to whether or not the capacitor is within spec. Uh, if something's way off spec as far as a capacitor, or if, it's, or if it's iffy, or if it's jumping around, or if you put it on the uh, resistance measurement on a capacitor and, and it has a reading, a resistance reading, that kind of throws up a red flag. You might be looking at a bad capacitor. So um, lots you can do with digital multimeters, and uh, there are lots of things you cannot do without one. Uh, next thing you're absolutely going to have to have on your list is a soldering iron uh, of some kind. Now I've uh, kind of scoured Amazon in search of like um, inexpensive uh, s soldering irons. There are a lot of people who are going to tell you, you know, oh man, just get a, a Weller, you know, uh, because Weller's been around for a long, long time. They're a respected name in the soldering iron game. Uh, but I'll be quite honest with you, the last couple of wellers that I've had really did not last nearly as long as I thought they should have. Uh, they crapped out on me when when I didn't, you know, I didn't think they should have crapped out on me. So I've kind of moved away from wellers uh, because the last soldering iron that I had that lasted a really, really long time was the cheapest uh, Radio Shack piece of crap 
<laughs> that you can really think of. So, uh, and the way I see it, most soldering irons are fairly inexpensive anyway. So I kind of use them till they burn out, and then I go get another one because uh, that's what I've had to do with my wellers when I've when I've spent a lot on those anyway. So that's what I would kind of recommend. Now, if you want to get a really, 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 really nice uh, soldering iron, you can get what's called a hexacon. Uh, these are very, very nice soldering irons and uh, a lot more expensive. If you, but if you want to do any kind of soldering on chassis where you're going to need a lot of heat, um, and I actually use mine for pretty much everything except for PCB boards. Um, PCB boards, if they're if it's tiny uh, pads on the boards. Uh, I don't use it on those because it'll burn them up fairly rapidly, but uh, just about anything else, I use my hex, uh, Hexacon, uh, which is hundreds of watts. Uh, so it's really, if you want the best, buy a Hexacon, not a Weller. Uh, if you want something that will get you everyday soldering, I recommend this soldering iron kit. Uh, this has a soldering iron. It has a lot of other accoutrements that you're going to need for soldering, such as a solder sucker, a uh, little bit of solder, but I think it's unleaded uh, solder, which is what really what you don't want. Uh, you get several tips with it. You get a little stand for it, um, and a little carrying case and things like that. So, and, if, and for you know for the money, it's a pretty good deal. So uh, this is the one that if if I was starting out today, this is I would probably buy something like this, um, you know, to and not spend a whole lot of money up front. Next thing you're absolutely going to need is some form of wire stripper. Uh, crimper or cutter. This particular tool does all three. I don't necessarily like the cutter aspect of this one because the cutters are kind of um, they're kind of hidden way down on the jaws and they won't really work well in all situations where you have to reach way inside of an amplifier and cut something. Um, so you're going to need another set of cutters as well but you're definitely going to need these for its, their wire stripping uh, and the crimping capabilities. You're also going to need a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, there are a lot of times when you need to bend wires a certain angle, you know, to get them around something. You're going to need to bend, be able to bend component leads uh, onto terminals and things like that. So you are going to need some needle nose pliers for that. You're also going to need some um, rosin core solder. Uh, I recommend the stuff that has some lead in it. Um, people will tell you, you know, that this is more dangerous and whatever you believe about lead poisoning and, you know, the level, the safe levels of exposure, uh, you can do more research on that. Uh, different people think different things on that, but generally it's understood that uh, you can be poisoned by lead. Um, however, um, handling this solder, as long as you, uh, as long as you handle it safely and you, you know, I always wash my hands after every time I've been doing a lot of uh, soldering and stuff. Um, and uh, use cold water and just wash your hands off and uh, at least I don't think I'm lead poisoned. <laughs> Who knows I might get Alzheimer's at the age of 40 but but yeah you're gonna need the stuff with the lead and the reason is because it just works better and you need stuff with uh, rosin in the core. The rosin is just gonna act as a flux agent uh, so you don't have to buy separate flux. It's just kind of an all-in-one solution and it's a little easier to work with if you get the stuff that's rosin core. The last thing that I'm going to recommend that I would label as essential would be contact cleaner. Um, the stuff that I show here, uh, the CRC industrial stuff, usually is relatively inexpensive. You can get this stuff at automotive stores uh, locally to you probably. If you just walk into any like AutoZone, you can get this kind of stuff. And it's effective and it's cheap. It's not the absolute best for things like pots. Um, if you wanted to have the best stuff for pots, you can get some. Uh, uh, you can get other things for for that, and there's you know people have different opinions on that as well. However, if you're just if you're cleaning uh, pots kind of casually, this stuff is okay for that. Just don't flood the pots out to the point where you you know you strip out all of uh, all of the grease on the sh the pot shaft. So it, you know it's good for pots in, in some regard. Uh, it's also great for cleaning uh, other things like tube sockets. You're going to find a lot of situations where you'll get weird, strange noises out of a tube amp, and all it turns out to be is a dirty uh, tube socket and dirty tube pins. So there it is, my list of essentials that you're going to need in order to get into the amplifier repair game. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the, down in the comments if I've left anything out or if you think that something doesn't belong on this list. 
I invite all comments. Uh, let me know where I've screwed up and let me know what you think. Uh, for now, I'm going to say goodbye and y'all take care. Polly wants a cracker.